It's your uncle's mustache and your aunt's haircut. How's it going? <laughs> I, I take public transit everywhere. Yeah, it doesn't surprise you guys. I look like someone who rides the bus. I get, you see me every day, I'm scared by this guy! And it's terrible, he knows, he's with me on it every day. But sometimes, you'll hear you. You smell me. Too far, my friend. That's the one step too far. I, I feel like I'm actually hurt now, right? <laughs> not quite. My bad. Because he smells good. That's what he's not mentioning. <laughs> Nobody buys it. They're all on his side. <laughs> TTC's terrible. Sometimes you overhear some incredible conversations, though. I was on it. This, this girl turned to her friend, and she's like, Oh, Dante and his boys are all getting a blowjob tonight. <laughs> So many questions, right? What did Dante do to get a blowjob, not just for him? He's hidden all of his life. It's impressive. And she didn't stop there, though. She kept talking. She's just like, I'm getting my drink on. I'm catching something tonight. It's incredible. Like, I risk catching a cold, the flu, maybe even the chicken pox, but just something? That is by far the most casual sex you can have, for sure. And I'm not trying to judge anyone, you know, man or woman for being promiscuous, but you should be safe. I felt a need to say something to this girl. She's like, hey, I'm Tim, I'm one of Dante's boys. I'm 33 years old. Sometimes that surprises people when I tell them that. They'll be like, you don't look it, but notice. They're not saying you look good for your age. <laughs> but a weird thing, too. A lot of times when you ask someone their age, they just put it right back at you. They're just like, how old do you think I am? It's not like when you ask someone the time, they're like, what time do you think it is? <laughs> Could be late. Help me out, all right? No, I think people just want to give you a chance to sort of accidentally insult them. Because I was working at one place, and my boss, he played the game. How old do you guys think I am? A girl I work with, she guessed 50 years old. Yeah, that's never a good guess, never. Yeah, my boss was 32 years old. She was fired promptly, we all understood. I grew up skateboarding. When you're just like skateboarding, people just yell at you out of cars. This guy did it for sure, he knows. They just yell. They're just like, skate or die! Skate or die! I always pick skate, okay, every time. I actually think skateboarding is really similar to stand-up comedy. You know, you skateboarding, you try a trick nine, ten times, maybe it'll work. Joke, same way, try nine, ten times, maybe it'll work. It just shows if you work really hard at both, your parents will still be disappointed in you. <laughs> Didn't stop there, too, after skateboarding. People still yelling at me out of cars. Last summer, I got the weirdest thing. Someone yelled at me, David Suzuki. <laughs> it's a complicated diss from a moving vehicle. You know? <laughs> like I, get, I had sort of like a Suzuki and sweater on, like a full beard, shorter hair. Still one pretty big detail separating me from David <laughs> Suzuki. <laughs> He's a much older man, much older. But a hundred percent more Asian as well. You call me like a white hipster David Suzuki. Not a big burn. As soon as I figured it out though, I just yelled back. I was like, I'll show you the nature of things! Uh, you know, very Canadian diss, you know. I'm a, I'm a Canadian guy though, like I'm so patriotic. I use Canadian Netflix by choice, okay? <laughs> I want to get a feel for you guys. I want you to clap if you do not have a tattoo. <laughs> now clap if you do have a tattoo. Yeah, much cooler claps from those people, for sure. <laughs> I'm like the first group. I don't have any tattoos. Because my brother, 
He just set the worst example for me. His first tattoo, Tasmanian Devil with skis on, right on his thigh. <laughs> like, he got it there so he could hide it from my parents. That's good, he can hide it from everyone there now. The second one was just like a tribal kind of symbol on his arm. He has no idea what it is. Because people in the 90s, they picked out tattoos the worst possible way. They would just like walk into a shop and just be like, oh. Oh yeah, yeah, put that on my body. <laughs> Forever, please. Right? <laughs> the call? Oh. H16. Very meaningful. <laughs> so my brother. White guy with dreadlocks. Okay, just build his character. He had a dog named Celestia. Yeah, you become Rastafarian when you say that dog's name. He's also a DJ for a subgenre of drum and bass music. <laughs> called Jungle? Any jungle heads in here tonight? No. There's no jungle heads anywhere. <laughs> he decided to get his DJ name tattooed on his arm. His DJ name was Duh Peaceful Warrior. That's right. Duh Peaceful Warrior. It's kind of a poem, I guess. But it's just, uh, and he got it translated to another language for no reason. I'm pretty sure there's not a word or character for duh in Japanese. <laughs> it's actually so common for people to have tattoos nowadays. I almost wonder, like, would a parent get a tattoo for their infant? Like the same way a parent might get their infant's ears pierced? I did a Google search and someone did it. <laughs> it was in Florida. That's not surprising to me. Like, if anywhere. Guy, he broke in. In the middle of the night, not a tattoo artist, just like infant in hand, and put the initials D and B on the kid's arm. That stood for daddy's boy. Yeah, is there any guy in here who would have liked to have gone through their entire life with daddy's boy tattooed on their arm? Like, you just have to tell people it stood for Dante's boy to get through it, right? <laughs> I find myself at a lot of weird bars in Toronto doing stand-up comedy. And there was that one called Not My Dog. And they have two cats that live there. Or like work there or something. It's a little bit funny. <laughs> I went to like the back patio. One of the cats was there on one couch. I sat on the other couch. <laughs> that cat saw me though, you know, it did like a cat stretch. Sort of walking towards me. Hopped up on the couch right next to me. Nuzzled against me. She's like, you know what? I don't like this cat very much. See, I like a cat that makes me work for it a little bit, you know? Like, I'll still pet it. I might not respect it the next day. Like, I can say, my game with girls has never been as good as my game with cats. If it's late at night and I come across a cat, I feel confident that I could pick it up, right? <laughs> You can't use the same strategy with a girl. Late at night, dark sidewalk, you know, I'm just kind of like walking towards her. I can't like slow down a little bit, you know? Just like extend my hand. I have a cat. He's been, he's been shedding a lot. My roommate, he's been kind of on me. He's like, dude, you gotta get a brush for him. Like, really? I feel like my cat spends about eight hours a day grooming himself. <laughs> Wanted to keep the peace though, I got a brush. It's been a month, my cat hasn't used it once. Not even a month. Uh, I think cat owners are kind of crazy too. You know, like they'll, they'll go so far as to say cats are man's best friend. Never would I say that. My cat woke me up at three in the morning with a dead mouse in his mouth. Just like dropped it down, just pawing at it. Then I saw the mouse move. Oh no, that thing was still alive. I had to put it out of its misery. But that shows my cats are not man's best friend. Because if your best friend woke you up at three in the morning, it was like, Tim, I've killed someone. Oh my god, really? Well, almost. You have to finish it up. And dispose of the body! 
<laughs> That's not your best friend. You're their best friend for sure, 100%. Yeah, we all know, man's best friend? Dogs. Dante, Dante. 